Okay, when you're wanting to start identifying trees, you can identify them several different ways. You can identify them by the appearance of their bark, by the fruit or the nut they produce, by their leaves, which right now we're in early spring, so a lot of our leaves haven't emerged or they're really small. But we're gonna do the best we can. And you can also identify them by their branching pattern. Our first lesson is going to be in trees that have an opposite branching pattern. What that means is that the branches come off directly across from each other. And an easy way to remember this is the acronym MAD, M-A-D. That stands for maple, ash, and dogwood. So we're going to go through it that way. And then your homework will be to go into your backyard. This is my backyard I'm standing in. My daughter is my uh, filmer right now and see if you can find some of these same trees. They're very common. This is our first tree. This right here is a red maple. It's a very common tree in the south. You can see this is an opposite pattern of branching. If you look straight up, you see right here this branch comes off and then there's another one coming off directly across from it. That lets you know that you can narrow this one down to a maple, an ash, or a dogwood. To further it narrow it down, you would look at the leaves. We're going to talk more about leaves as we go, but this is a simple leaf, okay? It has serrated edges like a saw blade around the perimeter. And the bark. is slick or smooth. This is a juvenile tree. It's gonna be very smooth. The younger trees will be. As they get older, they will have some cracks in the bark, but it will be smoother than most other trees. So remember this one. This is a red maple or a maple. All right, this is ash. This is our middle letter, the A in our acronym, MAD. This is the, a sample of the bark. It's very distinct. This is a white ash. We have white and green ash. White ash is normally up on the hill and green ash is normally down in the lower areas by the creek. You can separate them by looking at their seed, which is a Samara. It's a seed type that has a wing. I don't have one of those readily available to show you, but learn this bark. It's, uh, it's got a corky feel to it. It's, it has a diamond shaped pattern almost in the bark if you look. Kind of similar to hickory but much tighter and it's fairly white in appearance. So it's, it's very distinct once you get used to looking at it. This is a more mature tree and the leaves hadn't emerged yet so it's hard to see that branching pattern. I've got a smaller one in another part of my yard I'm going to show you next where we can see that opposite branching and even some young juvenile leaves. All right this is a baby ash tree right here. I had to put a ribbon on it so I wouldn't lose it when I came back. You see here very distinct and obvious opposite branching pattern. You can see both of those branches coming off at the exact same point. And if we go further up the stem, it just repeats. Okay, luckily this is a young ash, a young white ash. And you can see the leaves are starting to emerge. What's really unique about ash leaves is they are compound leaves, which means each one of these, and this is just a baby, that is one leaf. And then each one of these is a leaflet coming off the leaf. So that is a way to narrow this one down. You've got the opposite branching, so you know you probably got a maple ash or a dogwood. And then if you look at the leaves, of those three, this is the only one with a compound leaf, meaning all the leaves come off of one stem and then they have leaflets. Other trees that have this arrangement are also hickories. You'll see common. We'll talk about the hickory in a later segment.
So remember that, remember the bark we looked at. White ash. This is the dogwood. This is the state flower of North Carolina. It's an important tree. A lot of you are probably familiar with it when it flowers, which it is flowering this time of year. I'm looking at this tree from underneath, so it's hard to see the flowers. But if you look up and you examine that branching pattern, you'll see that these are also opposite. The branches come off directly across from each other in most places. Some of this may appear to be alternate, but it's not. It's just where some of the branches have broken off over time. The bark on dogwood is also very distinct. We call this blocky bark or corky bark. You'll see that it's got almost square chunks. The bark is very gray. There's some moss or some lichens on this bark, but it's a very distinct bark pattern that you can learn over time. Dogwood's not a big tree. Some of the bigger ones you'll see will probably be 8 or 10 inches in diameter. A lot of them are going to be small mid-story trees like this um, that are in the middle story or the understory of, the, of your forest. So uh, again, this is dogwood. Okay, I've got my assistant here. This is my forester in training, Nettie. Go pack. This is uh, the dogwood we were looking at, and this is a really good close-up picture of the flower, very distinct. We learn about these in North Carolina because it's our state flower, but I wanted to show you the leaves. Okay, we were talking about our ash earlier. This is a simple leaf, simple dogwood leaf. If you look at it, up close you can see it's got a smooth edge around the, the leaf and then the vein pattern in it is very distinct. But the main thing you want to look at is this smooth edges. The maple had a serrated edge like a saw. It also had some lobes, three lobes coming off of it. Okay, this is different, so remember that. Okay, great job on our first tree ID lesson. Um, get out into those backyards and practice what we've learned. Take advantage of a few review slides that I've prepared that go over some of the unique characteristics of each of the maple, ash, and dogwood. I'll also prepare a handout that there will be a link to on our social media post or that you can email me and get a copy of. See my email right here on the screen. I'd also be glad to answer any questions you might have uh, through commenting on the post or through sending me an email directly. Have your parents take some photos if you've got some trees that you're questionable about. I'd be glad to see if I can identify those. These trees, three trees don't occur everywhere in the United States, but they do occur across a wide geography, and I'll try to provide some insight on where you should be able to find these as well. Tree identification is a rewarding skill. I remember uh, after my dendrology class in forestry school, um, I, everything went from being a giant green blur to uh, unique trees everywhere, and I've been pleasantly distracted ever since. Get outside, enjoy nature, stay safe. Stay tuned for our next segment where we'll look at some more trees.